In this video, I'll share some tips for succeeding in this class. The main idea of ME2004 is using numerical methods to help us analyze engineering systems. Here are the course learning statements, copied straight from the syllabus. The first four bullets describe some of the numerical methods we'll be using. As you can see, it involves a lot of programming. However, the emphasis is on applying these numerical methods to complex engineering problems. Every problem we solve will have some sort of engineering-related focus. I'd like to address some common misconceptions about this class. The most common misconception is the idea that ME2004 is purely a coding class. We do code a lot, but the emphasis is on understanding how numerical methods can be incorporated in a software package to help us study engineering problems. We also do examples of the numerical methods by hand, which is a crucial analysis skill. Next, people often say you need to have taken all these upper-level classes in order to succeed. There's inherent overlap in the material because we examine real problems. One of the purposes of this class is to expose you to the exact problems you'll see as a junior and senior, but because this is an introductory class, we don't dive deep into the theoretical background. Upperclassmen who have already taken these classes and are now taking ME2004 may have a much deeper appreciation for the problems we solve, but it is by no means necessary. Finally, this is an application class. We solve physically significant problems. For instance, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we studied how an epidemic spread across a population using different models. We intentionally give you problems which help you understand a problem you'll see in the future. ME2004 is unlike any other class in the curriculum. The biggest adjustment is the mindset. Nowadays, students have been conditioned to plug in numbers to a formula and spit out a result. This is by no means your fault, it's a systematic problem. The plug and chug approach doesn't work here because it's an application class. Every problem we give you will be wildly different than the last, so you have to carry over the concepts, not the formulas. Understanding the process can be a huge learning curve. As a follow-up, the internet can be your friend or foe. There's plenty of genuinely helpful information out there, but there's also an ample amount of seemingly helpful stuff that actually ends up screwing you over in the long run. Two examples are online solution manuals and Chegg. As a fellow student, I acknowledge that some turn to these resources to understand how to solve a problem. But once again, that doesn't work here because it teaches you how to solve that specific problem, but not the general idea. Because no two problems are alike, Learning how to solve one problem probably won't help you on the next. Once again, it's all about understanding the process. Furthermore, some students struggle due to a poor MATLAB, linear algebra, or calculus foundation. All three are absolutely essential if you want to succeed. Although we briefly review these, it's expected that you know it because they're covered in the prerequisite courses. We have a Canvas page dedicated to MATLAB tutorials, so please brush up if you're rusty. I know I just rattled off some things that may scare you, but that's not the intent. There's a lot of good to come from this class. I believe the soft skills you'll take away from this class are invaluable. You'll learn how to think algorithmically. You'll learn how to break down a massive problem into bite-sized chunks. You'll see how changing system parameters affects the results both qualitatively and quantitatively. Above all, we hope to build good habits. This includes things like extensively documenting your work and instinctively wondering how something works. It's okay if you immediately forget all the course material the day after the semester ends, but I hope you will have been at least instilled with some soft skills. These soft skills will prepare you for your career. So how do you succeed in this class? To me, there are three key principles. First, this class is all about rigor. This means not skipping any of the steps, being thorough, and getting used to all the really annoying small details. Next is the pay now or pay later principle. The idea is that you have to incur some cost eventually, so you might as well suffer now than later. The cartoon over here is a great example of this. Like a credit card, you can quickly rack up debt, but it'll eventually come back to haunt you. In this class, I always tell students to make a flowchart after reading the problem, but it's incredibly tempting to skip that and jump straight into MATLAB. This leads to a bunch of logic errors, and you'll spend more time debugging than if you made the flowchart first. Debugging is infuriating. You want to spend as little time debugging as possible, so take the extra few minutes at the beginning to make sure you don't spend hours trying to debug your code. 
Finally, this is essentially a class in delayed gratification. As previously stated, we solve problems you'll see again as an upperclassman. This is obviously good, but it means that you have to wait until you get to those classes to truly see the payoff of this class. Not being able to immediately apply your knowledge can be frustrating, but try to remember that you're in this for the long run. Every class you take builds your knowledge a little bit. Come graduation, you'll be very well equipped to succeed in the workforce. It's a long process, but try to not lose sight of the end game. Every semester, I get emails like this one saying this class finally paid off. It truly is an indescribable feeling. Whenever you're stuck in this class, remember that your hard work will eventually pay off. I'd like to give you some more specific advice. My advice certainly applies to this class, but also translates to every other class you'll take as well. First, what should you do before each class? You should read the textbook and look over MATLAB documentation of functions you don't understand. Our Canvas site constantly changes. We add the recorded lectures, supplemental materials, and more multiple times per week, so please check the site daily. It's also a good idea to review what we did in the last class so you're up to speed by the next. In doing so, you'll probably have some questions, so write them down and come prepared to ask. I'm giving you my advice solely based on my opinion as a former ME2004 student, undergrad at VT, and now GTA, so you might be wary because it's just my thoughts. But don't take my word for it. Here are some spot survey responses that we've collected over the years. We see similar responses every semester, so clearly there's some merit to this. What should you do during class? It sounds like common sense, but pay attention and take notes. It's easy to get distracted in today's era, but you might miss something important if you aren't paying attention. We record and post the lectures primarily for students living on the opposite side of the world, but some students have taken this to mean that they don't have to pay attention because they can just watch the recording later. Coming to class, not paying attention, and then having to re-watch the lecture is a waste of time. Previous students seem to agree. Some students don't know how to take notes in this class. Admittedly, it can be hard to take notes since we spend a lot of time coding. If we're coding, write comments describing what a command does. If we're reviewing theory from the textbook, you can underline or highlight specific passages. And lastly, don't be afraid to interrupt. This is a large class, so someone probably has the same question as you. It's better to stop the class momentarily to make sure everyone's on the same page than to be silent and potentially become even more confused as the lecture progresses. After class, give yourself time to process the material. This could take a day or two, but make sure you aren't procrastinating. We usually stay after class to answer questions, so if you don't feel comfortable asking during class, you can ask us afterwards when people have left. The most important piece of advice here is to practice on your own. You need to do this for two reasons. First, every problem is different, so you need to acclimate to thinking conceptually and procedurally instead of formulaically. Second, you may need the additional practice if you're unfamiliar with MATLAB. Repetition is the key to success in any class. I want to reiterate the value of fully understanding the problem before you start coding. Before you even think about opening MATLAB, you should develop some sort of flowchart, pseudocode, or a general outline of how you're going to approach the problem. This student included a flowchart in his work. It's not technically a proper flowchart, but it's enough to understand his thought process, and it was probably enough for him to understand what he needed to do. Unsurprisingly, this student did extremely well in the class. In the midst of an assignment, go slowly. It's easy to make typos and other silly mistakes when you're typing fast. Use your flowchart to guide you through the programming. Run your code every time you write a new line. This is incredibly tedious, but you can immediately isolate a mistake. It's much harder to debug a chunk of code. As you become more familiar with MATLAB, you can wean yourself off this process a little bit, but this is highly recommended for novices. You should also keep track of variables as dimensions and units. Is something a scalar or a vector? If it's a vector, how large is it? This is critical to debugging. An all too common error is trying to multiply two incompatibly sized matrices. You can immediately understand why this error occurs if you know the size of your variables. And finally, comment liberally. It's better to have too much documentation than too little. 
Remember, you'll probably reuse these codes in future classes, so commenting will help you remember what the code does and what all the variables mean. If we give you code, we'll try to comment extensively so you know exactly how to use it. In this code, we explain the purpose, the syntax, the variables, including the units and the size. In this example down here, we have five lines of comments to describe just one line of code. This is not only good for us when we look at your code, but also for you in the future when you want to reuse it. When you get to classes like Senior Design, you will be required to purchase a notebook in which you document all of your findings. You have to turn the notebook in for a grade, so you might as well get used to the documentation process early so it doesn't seem tedious come your senior year. So you finished the assignment. Now what? Before you submit, make sure you adhere to all the formatting guidelines on Canvas, such as the plot formatting guidelines. Not including a plot when it's required is a huge source of lost points. Another reason why students lose points is for submitting the wrong file. Submit your work well before the deadline, then come back a few minutes later to make sure that everything went through. We can actually see if you viewed your document. This is by far the easiest way to prevent any Canvas-related issues. Here's a partial list of some commonly skipped steps. Doing everything here will help you succeed. Is drawing a flowchart for every problem fun? No. Is testing your code after every line enjoyable? Absolutely not. If you do everything on this list, you'll definitely want to trash your laptop by the end of the first week, but you'll be much better off if you continue this throughout the semester. Remember that rigor is critical in this class. This entire list basically sounds like doing a bunch of extra work, but in reality, this is the bare minimum. It just seems like extra work because everything here is so routinely skipped. To conclude, the most successful ME2004 students ask questions, don't skip steps, and understand that everything done serves its purpose in the long run. If you understand the process instead of the formula, you'll do well. Good luck.